It's part of a growing and disturbing trend that we're seeing across the metro area. In just the last two weeks, six teenagers have been arrested for firing on officers. And that's not all. Wow. The number of underage people charged with... Yo, that, now, that's, now that's impressive, right? The AK? And no, uh, just one city. In one, I mean, one in one one state, that many teenagers firing at cops. From the driver's seat, police say those suspects caught last week were teenagers. It's part of a growing and disturbing trend any of them that at we're seeing across the metro area. In just the last two weeks, six teenagers have been arrested for firing on officers. Wow, Denver, six teenagers. Possible any Venezuelans in any of all those? You think? Maybe Are they there? Few, yeah. And that's not no, all. The number of underage people charged with homicide is up 124 percent over the past three years, according to the district attorney that handles cases in Arapahoe County. Now, your reporter in Aurora, Kelly Worthman, sat down with the D.A. and a division chief from Aurora Police for a look at why violent crime is on the rise among teens. During this encounter, uh, over 20 rounds were fired at. Uh, our officers watching body cam video of Aurora officers being shot at while responding to a report of a stolen car. Division Chief Mark Hildebrand is upset. That's appalling. It's disturbing and frustrating, he says, as scenes like this are happening more often. We're seeing this so much and any night on any call, um, they can be confronted with a situation. Just they're like telling us what they're healthy. seeing, but they're telling us what they're seeing, but they're not showing us what they're seeing, which is who. They're not showing us who. Here's my thing, though, because they're, they're the minors. But here's my thing. This is a deviation from the norm. So I'm I'm willing to bet that this is probably migrants because it's such a it, – remember the migrants in New York told the cops that the gang told them Greenland. to shoot at cops? Yep. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the gangs tell them to shoot at the cops. It was the, the green light was put on cops. Was, yeah, yeah, so this is probably the sons have been there committing the crime for eons, and they haven't been shooting at cops at this clip. And so, yeah, so I, I think this is migrants. On this night, on the other side of that gunfire, these clips hurt Kamala, teenagers, man. 15 and 16 years old. Not and really. That, he says, is not really her. The, most Democrats are soulless. They don't have souls. Like they just, they don't, they don't care about like these people, like that are like victims of crime. Most There's Democratic some sort of people, good. Yeah, their their allegiance is towards the criminal. They're thinking when they see this, if this is migrants, they're thinking about what can they do to get, to to make sure that the migrants don't have to resort to crime. I promise you, that's what they're thinking about. Oh, no, I, if, if they're looking at this, I'm I'm certain. You know, they're terrified of being racists. Yeah, they're going to ignore this problem too. Thinking, what did we not give them that led them into this life of crime? There you go. It's happening more often too. Teens getting their hands on guns in a variety of ways, then using them to commit violent crimes. What do you see as the root problem? for why so many teenagers and youth in the metro area, but here in Aurora, are taking part in these violent crimes? That's a very Kelly. difficult question to answer because I think we're all trying to understand why we've seen a proliferation of uh, youth violence within the nation, within our own communities. It's at crisis levels at this point. District Attorney John Kellner says violent crime among Colorado youth is skyrocketing. We've Salute the Deluxe 247, a.k.a. Cal Ripken, a.k.a. the real MVP, coming through once again. Salute the bro. Make sure you support the channel. Hit the PayPal, hit the Cash App, hit the Super Chat. Also, hit the Like button. Engage with the channel, support the channel. We've seen an over an increase of 20% of juvenile filings just since 2021. But more importantly, we've seen an increase of 124% when it comes to juvenile homicide filings. Why is this wow. happening? There's a lot of reasons behind why this is happening. I think our juvenile system 
is probably not taking a tough enough stance. Look at this guy, no. and, and that's a product of some of our How laws. Is she bigger than Along him? with more lenient punishments for young offenders, Kellner points to the Colorado legislature approving a dramatic drop in the bed count at pretrial juvenile facilities across the state, capped at 215. Judges have to make decisions about which violent juvenile to release to stay underneath this arbitrary bed cap. If you're releasing other violent juveniles back into the community, there's a sense that there isn't a consequence. Ass, ass, be cool, be cool. I'm gonna be cool. That perception of a lack of this consequence, is, uh, Hildebrand believes, is why the teens in this case this weren't afraid to reach for guns like a pretty and simple answer to fire build more prisons for kids. What's the solution? We have to build more prisons for kids. Effect, and we have to no, no, have it's build more prisons um, for because kids. this could have ended in a, in a very different way. He, he look good in Aurora, prison. Kelly Worthman, covering Colorado fur. What if the school uh, budget was spent on prisons? We could clean this, things this up. This kid right here shot at cops, and he didn't get killed or shot. He just got arrested. It's a miracle. We need to highlight less. What's that? So we need to highlight these situations when sons act like complete belligerent apes and towards cops and nothing happens at all. You mean by belligerent ape, you mean like shooting at them? I mean, you know, you know how sons act like fucking antagonizing them, not following orders, all that shit. Yeah, Have they started is, the investigation is, on the police yet? Yeah, oh, the, anytime, yeah, if the cops fire their weapon, it's going to be an investigation because anytime a cop fires their weapon, there's an investigation. Um, yeah. Just period. So, yeah. Um, yeah, man. We'll, uh, let's see. we we'll do one more, man. I'm, I'm, I'm about to pass out of this motherfucker. Um, that guy's lucky to be alive. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Uh, oh, wow. That was one I didn't really see. Wow, this one right here. Wow. Aurora. Tonight, a home invasion in Aurora. All of it caught on camera. Nice. Multiple armed suspects break into a home with two children inside posing as delivery drivers. Fox 31 speaking with those victims. Our Talia Cunningham is in studio with their message and more of some of that dramatic new video. All new at 9. Talia. Yeah, Erica, dramatic is right. Some terrifying moments for a family in Aurora. So the crime was caught on ring doorbell camera and it all starts right here all with right. this guy. He's wearing like a worker's reflective vest and he's holding a package posing as a delivery driver. Clearly he isn't, that package is empty. He then rings the doorbell and waits for someone to answer. Someone does, and then this. I'm here in Spanish. Oh, burrito. It all happened in a matter of seconds. What you just saw was that man pushing the door open and forcing himself inside the home. And then two other men with guns rush inside. After only one minute, the men then run out, pile into a car and race down the street. Oh, a caretaker and two young children were inside the home at the time. And as you can imagine, a traumatic experience for all of them. When authorities arrived, one of the children, a six-year-old boy, visibly shaken. <laughs> His mom and dad claim the suspects hit their son and caretaker, pushing him to the ground and wow. inappropriately touched their 14 year old daughter. The incident. Oh, wow. They just had to, you know, cop a fill in the middle of a robbery. This country yeah. has no idea. Yeah, yeah, that type of stuff. This this is some burrito right here, but. The other two was on burrito. This is some burrito. Happened in a matter of seconds. And then this second what one coming saw... through is an on burrito. They're not sending their bus. It's what you just saw. Yeah. Do you realize, you know, imagine what... from where they used to live, their, saw... their country, the kind of wealth that exists in most American homes, just basic wealth and stuff you can grab and sell compared to where they come from. They still have huts in their people's countries, man. It's, yeah, and, and this and place is so right. Yeah, and, and in their country, man, like even though the, every, it's not a one hundred percent perfect the criminal justice system, when they smack you down, you're going to a prison that is literally like, but like a draconian dungeon from like the seventeen hundreds compared to a prison in the United States. 
Yeah. Our prisons are like fucking hotels compared to their prisons. They're going to so do like, well in the American hey, prisons. Yeah, even if you do go to prison, it's nothing like going to prison in your home, man. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they, they, they went in across so get the ready, board. everybody. Yeah. You just saw was that man pushing the door open and forcing himself inside the home. And then two other men with guns rush inside. After only one minute, the men then run out, pile into a car and race down the street. A caretaker and two young children were inside the home at the time. And as you can imagine, a traumatic experience for all of them. When authorities arrived, one of the children, a six-year-old boy, visibly shaken. His mom and dad claimed the suspects hit their son and caretaker, pushing him to the ground and inappropriately touched their 14-year-old daughter. The incident happened on Wednesday, June 12th at 845 p.m. in a neighborhood on South Richfield Street. Police say this was a robbery as well, with personal items, mostly jewelry and cash, stolen. Although the parents weren't home at the time, they dialed 911 immediately after being notified by the Ring video, telling us they're scared. El dinero, las joyas. This mother says it's not about the material things stolen because they can be replaced. It's about the trauma her young children were put through. She adds they spent that night in the hospital getting the kids checked out after allegedly being assaulted. And tonight, Aurora police are investigating this crime and do believe that this family was targeted because they run a business out of their own home. That husband mm. tells us he's a barber and cuts hair, believing this was a crime oh, of opportunity. Yeah. So take a look here. It may be hard to tell, but if you recognize any of these three men or know anything about this crime, you're asked to call Aurora police immediately. And um, Brito on um, Brito violence. Man. Yeah, man. Salute, man. Great show, guys, man. Same black time. Same black channel. I'm out of here. Peace up. Night, folks.